Rolling over the border into North Korea, I must admit I felt some intrepidation. This was George Bush's axis of evil, an outpost of tyranny as he called it, a supposed threat to the Western world. And here I was, with a full broadcast production kit in my luggage, about to face border control. Journalists must obtain a special visa to enter North Korea, and my concern was, when the border guards saw all my gear, they'd think I was a journalist. The border crossing ended up being no problem at all. They didn't even look at my video camera, but all mobile phones were bound and sealed, with the stipulation they were not to be used during the visit. The first thing that hits you when you travel by train into North Korea is just how lush and green it is. Every available space is used to grow food, such as corn and rice. It looks like an agrarian wonderland, hills of rolling green, dotted with small villages. On closer inspection, one notices the lack of machinery, the oxen cart, everything from cutting grass to ploughing fields, done by hand. The contrast with the smog-filled hyperdevelopment of China is startling. Arriving in the capital, Pyongyang, the first thing to hit me was the distinct lack of cars. No roadblocks, no bottlenecks, just wide open boulevards. The footpaths, on the other hand, were full of people, walking, riding bikes, always on the move. The public transport system includes electric buses and a two-line subway system. It was while filming on the subway that I realised something quite unusual. I've filmed all around the world, and this has included places where I have not had permission or that have been dangerous. I realised on the subway I pretty much had carte blanche. It was like everyone had been told, tourists are good for our economy, they like taking photos, just ignore this unusual behaviour. No one batted an eyelid. Highlights for me in Pyongyang included the amazing murals and statues, and I particularly like the quirky music room full of boom boxes in the grand people's study house. I remember reading that Cuba was the only sustainable developed country in the world and that if we were serious about our ecological footprint we would need to adopt a lifestyle similar to that of Cubans. Of course the Cuban lifestyle has pretty much come about due to trade embargoes. In North Korea the self-imposed ecological sustainability can be traced to the Juche idea developed by Kim Il-sung. This concept embraces the three tenets of political independence economic self-sustenance and self-reliance in defence. And this is what makes North Korea such a fascinating place to visit. It represents what happens when a country with an almost entirely government-planned, state-owned economy cuts itself off from the rest of the world. At the moment, to visit North Korea, one must go with a tour company. Each tour group is accompanied by two local guides. These guides will tell you what you can and can't photograph. The only restrictions placed on me was that I was told I was not allowed to take any photos of any groups of soldiers. The tour company I used was Young Pioneer Tours. They've been running small group tours for Westerners at a budget price since 2008. Gareth, our tour leader, has visited North Korea a staggering 36 times. There is no one in the tourist industry 
that knows North Korea so well, and to talk with him gives one an amazing insight into this secretive country. Next we visited Kaesong, the ancient capital of Korea. It did not escape me that we were the only group walking the quaint cobbled streets surrounded by traditional houses. Kaesong is like a tourism boom town waiting to happen. Visiting the museum and learning of the history of the Koryo period, I thought to recent history, political movements, and how only 60 years have made the two careers, North and South, so distinguishable. Our tour then headed to the demilitarized zone, and it really took me by surprise. I was expecting stern-faced soldiers ready to attack. Instead, I discovered busloads of Chinese tourists snapping photos of obliging military. I'd read a fair bit about North Korea before I travelled there. I'm well aware of its problems, but as a travel video producer, I believe in the positive effects of tourism. What we are seeing now in North Korea is a change. A change, I believe, will be for the better. Currently, less than 2,000 Westerners visit North Korea each year. The tourism industry is still very much at a fledgling stage. Americans are only allowed entry visas in 2010. So it's a very exciting time to visit. You really are treated like royalty, and not once did I feel unsafe. There is a lot you won't be able to talk about with your North Korean guides on current tours, and there is a lot of the country you won't see. But if you want to see a country like nothing else on earth, at a fascinating stage in history, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea is well and truly open for tourism. But be quick, the winds of change blow strong in the year of a rising dragon. <laughs>